a man walked up and asked me the question. It's the same question I get asked after every public event. He identified himself as a Christian of what he considered a conservative variety. He asked, why are you standing with Muslims instead of converting them? My answer, as a Christian, after over nearly 300 public engagements, is always the same. Because of Jesus. This response nearly always seems to be beyond the imagination of those who ask. They think there's only one. There's only one religion, that is. More precisely, they think there is only one religion or worldview or philosophy that is faithful to, understands, and is accepted by the creator of the universe. There's only one that's right. And they're right. There is only one. But I have learned through engaging with my Jewish, Muslim, Sikh, Indigenous, Buddhist, Hindu, Agnostic, Atheist, Christian, and other neighbors that there is only one, one humanity. What my conservative Christian friend was assuming is monoreligionism, that there is only one true religion. This leads, especially under conditions of anxiety in a society, to claiming that full humanity is limited to those within our own in-group. Monoreligionism expressed as a desire in human beings to claim our in-group is superior. It reduces others to subhuman or suggests they are only potentially human until they convert. Among Christians, it reduces salvation, for instance, to acceptance by an exclusive in-group. It is a good thing to be committed to one's wisdom tradition. But no wisdom encompasses and owns the source of all wisdom. Monotheism, on the other hand, proposes that there is one creator and thus one humanity. Monotheism proposes that the diversity of human beings, cultures, and religions, and perspectives is a beautiful feature of our one humanity. This leads, even under conditions of anxiety in a society, that the humanity of every person and every group is inalienable. It recognizes differences, and even conflicts, but offers a way through them. In Luke chapter 10 in the Christian scriptures, Jesus told a positive story about a group with whom he had racial and religious differences. Jesus had the compassion, curiosity, and courage to tell a humanizing story about a dehumanized group, Samaritans. This is the way Jesus walked. To follow the way of Jesus is to recognize and take risks to honor the unity of the human family. This commitment to the unity of the human family must not be just something we believe. To speak of the unity of the human family is powerful, but it is not enough. For it to really matter, it must be a commitment that drives us to relate to each other, to speak well of each other in public, to work for the common good, and to risk ourselves for those whose humanity at this moment is being denied. The challenge of this moment is that we are living in a kind of funhouse mirror of dehumanization. It is amplified by those who benefit from us being torn asunder. It is amplified both by our amygdalas and the algorithms that shape what we see. We stand for one group and then stand against another. We hear words about our own group with horror and then repeat words about other groups without enough care about the impact of our words. But there is really only one humanity. There is only one. This is not just a concept, but a vision that can inspire us to act. It can inspire us to risk for one another's humanity in this moment. As the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we either go up together or we go down together. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is a day to consider what we are willing to risk for each other and with each other. Spend time as I have listening to the last speech that he gave before he gave his life because he was committed to the notion that there is only one.
that we are one.